Hello everyone, this is George Diaz, president and founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I'm bringing you another episode of Defining Infusionsoft Success. Today, I have Allison Boyle back. Uh, she uh, was a guest on my program um, on an earlier episode, and uh, we talked about her adventure, I'd like to say, of building an Infusionsoft learning system. And so she's out there, you know, working the technology, and the content, and, and those are challenging. And as I was you know, talking with her, she was sharing with me the challenge of getting the marketing side of it going. And uh, you know, to quote her, she was saying, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, so uh, Allison, how are you? Uh, I'm great, thanks, George. Uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah, and as you can see, she's from the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, in the UK, she's a Brit. <laughs> and um, so she is, um, you know, we're going to be talking today about the marketing of a membership site. And why don't you kind of uh, run us through, um, I, I guess, where you are and what's behind you and then what you've, I don't want to say you discovered, but what you now are facing when you start looking at the marketing of all this. Oh, my gosh. Good question. Good question. So I've, um, I'm at the stage now where we have... I would probably say about 70% of the videos done. Um, they're just literally being edited as we speak uh, for the course. So, so um, this is this is the content that goes into this, the course. This is the content that goes into the course. So we've done, you know, the, the welcome and then the, the strategy and then the how-to videos. So we, we've got all the videos together. Once as soon as you've got them back, you then just have to put them into the membership course. So. We've kind of got that part of the technology uh, creative side under control. Um, we're now at a point where we have to work on the front end, which is reaching people and uh, sharing what we've done with people and, and getting the right people to, to come visit the site and obviously find calls. Right. And that's, um, that, that's a lot. There's a lot to that. And, you know, in hindsight, you could say, maybe I should have done it the other way around, but I just felt I, I couldn't really promote something without knowing what we were doing the course on. And so we had to, I had to have a very clear structure about the course in order to now know how to promote it. So what we're now faced with is the course is, is kind of almost 80% almost done. Uh, and now we're looking at the front end, which is uh, right, got to write the, 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 the people to build up the audience, to drive them to a blog post or maybe do a webinar, uh, prior to the sale, then create the emails and create the funnel, then, then do the Facebook advert. So yeah, that's all the moving parts that I'm now right. faced with. Right. So, so it's interesting. You, you mentioned something, maybe I should have done it the other way around. And I, I completely understand that. Uh, you have to understand what you're selling before you start selling it. Uh, but there's there's kind of a lot of, um, you know, talk and, you know, we recommend it to, to some of our clients, which is, you know, build yourself a minimally viable product, an MVP. Um, and, and for some people, that's that feels very, like, inadequate as a, as yeah. a product offer. But it's much better to have something you haven't invested that much time in, and then you, you do a big test market of it. If it flops, you know, and that's not what we're looking for, then, you know, you, you, you minimize your losses. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And to a point, we, we've probably done maybe just a little bit more than the minimum viable product um, because we, there needed to be like a, a start, a middle, and an end to it. So, uh, and we were very clear and very specific on who this, who we were targeting for this. And this is specifically targeted to people who have, uh, they've got infusions off because they know it's the right thing, but they've got it and now they're maybe a little bit overwhelmed by it, but they think, oh, well, I'll, I'll just manage with it anyway. I'll just, I'll just kind of, you know, try it as I go. And then they uh, throw a whole load of tactics at it. So okay, okay. So you're so you're covering. It, it's not a how to necessarily. It is, but it is. It, it's a strategy. So it's a okay. Think think about the bigger picture. 
and, and these were steps to think about the bigger picture. Which, which has and nothing there. to, you, you're, not on, you're not sitting there in Infusionsoft typing yet. You're thinking about what it is you want to accomplish first, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So think about what it is you want to accomplish um, and then think about how that can relate and how you can maximize Infusionsoft for that. We then go into the uh, implementation. So there's the strategy of how to approach the software to get the most out of it. And then there's the actual implementation inside the app. Gotcha. Okay, so that, that frames what it is that you're, you're going to be offering. So, so now you're going, okay, how do I go to market with this, right? And, and as a matter of fact, show, show that sheet of paper that you were kind of, I mean, we don't have to like study it, but so she's got these funnels that she's now, um, you know, going through. And then so, so share with us th this exercise that you're doing now. So this exercise was, uh, we were trying to figure out uh, basically who our audience was. We had to work on the premise that who, how much knowledge do people have about what we're trying to do versus those people that who are at the, the businesses that are at the stage where what on earth is Infusionsoft? So there are people who are completely unaware of Infusionsoft and I'm not necessarily targeting them. I would be doing a different funnel for them. So you, you, would, even, you, would, you would almost want to push them away, right? Because they're, yeah. they're not buyers. Correct, correct. But there's people who have obviously come on a journey and they've got to the point where uh, uh, they know they need it, they know they need the software, they know that the software is going to help them and they think to themselves, great, uh, I'll get it, I'll, I'll maybe you know, do a couple of things with it, well, that'll be it. And it doesn't quite work like that. And then they think, oh, it's all a bit overwhelming, I can't understand it, where do I go, how do I do this, how do I so, do that? So they're, they're using um, it very tactically, using it kind of like as a sophisticated MailChimp or, or as a MailChimp, right? Yes, yes, exactly. They're using it as or a weather or something like that. Right, right, constant contact. The single email broadcast and they're not maximizing the, the, the segmentation in it right. or the lead scoring or the campaign builder um you know and where you can send out obviously multiple emails to so, so you so one of your uh, avatars is the person who's using infusionsoft like an aweber yes yes and so you've yeah. got a which is interesting because you could talking to that person I mean, you know, we've all been there. It's like you know exactly what they're struggling with. Yes, totally. So, totally. so, so, so your funnels are kind of going through. Uh, how do you how do you engage with that yeah. with that user? And it's transitioning from, uh, and it's a mindset transition from uh, from your Mailchimp because you think, oh, Mailchimp, great, I can just do an email blast to everyone, um, whereas realistically again this all goes back to understanding your audience and knowing who you're speaking to and therefore in what language so for instance now we're having this conversation we're talking about infusion soft because your audience are people who know and understand uh the technology your audience are not people who've never heard of it because they'd be like what on earth are you talking about no no right and and, and and you're right because my audience like for example i'm a partner but i don't I rarely sell Infusionsoft because by the time they come to me, they've already got Infusionsoft. They are probably using it in a pretty sophisticated way. And now they're looking for help in either transforming their current membership site or, uh, you know, they've got a lot of offline material that they have to move into a membership site. So it's a different audience. If, if they saw your Facebook ad, they'd go, oh, okay, that's for the newbies. Potentially, potentially. Uh, it would if I if I'd written it yet. I haven't written my Facebook ad yet. <laughs> right, right. No, but <laughs> right, because because that's going to be you know that's that's even ahead of that. You're now. Are, do you have a? Is it a content marketing strategy? Is that part of what you're you're thinking of doing? Yes, yeah, so it, it, it is a content marketing strategy. So my my goal is to to create. Um, there's two. There's going to be two avenues. One, I'm going to write a very long detailed blog post which will be a light version of the course um, and explain to people about how beneficial it will be and, and how to go about hopping onto it. And the other uh, 
the other route will be to do a webinar. So I need to, I'm going to be doing live webinars and getting people to sign up to, uh, to learn how by, by coming on this course, it's going to be able to change their perspective. It will get them going. It will get them to the point where they can start to see a return on, on, uh, on Infusionsoft. So it's almost like, how, how do I get unstuck? Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. and so so those would be how you introduce this to your audience, and that's really where your focus is now. While you've got your folks editing your content and things, you know, and I'm yeah. assuming your technology platform is kind of ready to go. Yeah, the technology is is very close to, to being ready, um, and I'm really hoping to have all of this done certainly in the next uh, certainly in the next couple of weeks or so. Yeah. So, so it's it's quite exciting. It's exciting to to have that content then start, you know, the, the goal is then start running traffic to the blog post and running traffic to the webinar, um, building up uh, or turning a cold audience into a warm audience and then uh, and then hopefully, you know, converting a few of them and seeing how see which see which one works. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's exciting and, and it's you know, every single step of this journey I can honestly say has been pushing me. Because, you know, think about it, I've not, you know, I've learned how to speak in front of a camera now. I've learned how to not be afraid of a camera. I've learned how to um, kind of storytell and tell people and explain to people how beneficial this is going to be for them in their business. And, and so that you, if they understand my journey, then they can resonate that with their journey. Um, I've learned the technology. I've learned how to use Membarium and Infusionsoft a little bit, um, you know. And I'm learning all the time. And, and the webinars, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's all new stuff. And I think that uh, that's been a challenge. But it's been quite exciting. I've completely changed. <laughs> yeah. Who no. thought? Who have thought? <laughs> Yeah, and, and by the way, you know, it's interesting because if I, I bet you if you go back to my last interview with you, which was like maybe six months ago, um, it, yeah, you do look a lot more comfortable in front of the camera. And, and I know, uh, like, I, every once in a while, I'll go back to, like, episode one of this uh, program, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I, 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 cured, I, cured, I cured myself, I think, of the ums and... Yes. You know, different things. And, you just have to, and, and again, you know, you just have to be your uh, overused word, your authentic self. You know, you just be the real you. You can't hide from being the real you. No, you as a matter of fact, you, you almost want to. Else. You almost want to leverage those as much as possible. Very um, much, yeah. So, um, you know, the more the more authentic you are, people are attracted to something about you, or they're not. And I think a lot of people spend too much time thinking about the not. And, and it's okay that if they're not, because if they're not, then then that's fine. Because everybody, everybody has people who love them, and everybody has people who hate them. You know, all the big marketing gurus, they all have people who 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 don't like them, and, and that's okay because that's the most normal thing in the world. Right, right. Everybody's got that issue. Yeah. And I'm... you just have to. And I think once you accept that, then you can move on. As long as you accept that and don't pay any attention to it and don't let that pull you back or or pull you down you just have to keep going yeah and and you know th th this kind of plays into what we're talking about because if i go back to some of the you know if i go back to videos i recorded two years ago uh, you know who do you use as your examples well you know the videos that you see the ones that you hear and you know i ended up throwing a lot of energy into my presentations on you know when i'm in front of the camera mm -hmm. Where, you know, what I realized, I've been a teacher, um, you know, I've, I've done university teaching and, and I like to teach. And so, you know, here I was trying to be high energy when my storytelling, which is part of my natural teaching, um, you know, is what I do. And so ends up that now, you know, in my video blog, I do them in one take. I mean, sometimes yes. maybe I'll have to break it up. But for the most part, it's one take because I know what the story is. I know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And now I'm saying it really authentically. And if you know, people say, hey, by the way, George, you did this wrong. And it's kind of like, sometimes it's like, okay, I have to fix that. But other times yeah. it's like, no, I'm not going to fix that because that's who I am. Yes. And, and if you don't like that, well, you know, change channels. <laughs> exactly. Everyone has a choice now these days. 
but uh, you know we all have choices yeah so that... i absolutely agree with you and and it's like anything as well the more you do it the more you get used to it and the more it becomes a convention Right, right. I mean, and you know, before we started, I had to move my, my umbrellas, the things that I used for my lighting, because they were distracting in the background. But now I've got them set up, and I just set them up real quickly, and literally I've got my, my little studio in place, usually in about five, ten minutes, and then I'll run. I usually like four, five, or six in a row, and then I, I feed them out. I'm sitting there changing shirts and whatever, so it doesn't look like I did them all in one row. Um, but see, this, this is critical to membership sites, you know, and e-learning sites, if, if you're gonna be the face. I mean, if it's a screen share, maybe not. Uh, but it's critical to acquire skills that have nothing to do with the technology of e-learning and membership sites, has nothing to do really with content generation. Um, I mean, for example, when I'm teaching, I'm actually in a different sort of mode. Uh, yeah. Where if I'm video blogging, I'm doing something else, and, and you're in that video blogging promotional space. Um, yes. And, and it's yeah. interesting the different skills. I mean, you're learning how to use your iPhone a lot better. You know, like yeah, yeah. I've got my and, and, and you, I've, I've got and my it, tripod it, here. <laughs> and and you know what? All of our all of my um, videos are taken on this. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to to get more sophisticated. I actually no. um, my my webcam, the one I'm using right now on my laptop, is surprisingly good. Uh, and with yeah. the right lighting, um, it, it works really well. And you know, and you just have to. And, and, and we, one thing that I noticed, because again, this is uh, this is a kind of the second take of the videos too. Because when I went back and we visited the original videos. Uh, what video lighting screen and it's made such a huge difference. Oh no. One of the things that I learned was uh, that we had to redo the videos because when I went back, this is kind of round two, when I went to the original ones, the lighting was pretty awful. And so I uh, went on to uh, Amazon and I bought a couple of really cheap lighting uh, screens for videos. And oh my gosh, made such a big difference, huge. And it cost me about 50, 50 pounds. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, totally. Totally. And so, um, so yeah, it's just been, uh, it's just been such a, uh, such a journey, really, genuinely such a journey. You're welcome. Um, the uh, the website is uh, www.thedigitaltrainingground.com. Okay, uh, www.thedigitaltrainingground.com. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yes, I'm hoping it'll be ready now. You know, we're getting quite close now, so uh, exciting stuff. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Bye.